welcome back folks to Get Limit Outdoors. I'm Chris Patterson, AKA the Bass Caddy. And today we're gonna to be talking with uh, Travis Edwards from Oklahoma City. And he's uh, been a co-angler on the BFL for quite a few years. And we wanna get his perspective on um, what a co-angler does to get prepared to go fishing or just to go fishing with a buddy as in general. What kind of things do you do to get prepared? Well, there's a few things I do, Chris, really. Uh, most of the time when I'm going to jump in someone else's boat, be it a tournament or be it just fun fishing for the weekend, mm -hmm. I do a lot of that. So uh, I think it's really important to always be organized and prepared as a co-angler as to not disrupt what the boater wants to do or even your friend. If you're going fishing with him, you don't want to be a disruption to it. Okay. So I think it's really important to stay organized when you're traveling. I put all of, all of everything that I carry with me when I travel goes in tubs. Okay. So either tubs or tackle bags, uh, line, plastics, all my crankbaits are organized in boxes, and all my tackle bags. I always only bring one tackle bag in the boat, okay, never multiple. You want to get everything that you want to take with you into one bag. It's easy to get in and out, and uh, that way you know where everything is and organized in there. Okay. And also, I always bring my own life jacket, regardless of whether I'm fun fishing or fishing a tournament, simply because you know it. It's fitted to your body, you know how to get it on and off, and uh, that way you can protect yourself a little bit better than wearing some old raggedy life jacket's been laying around. That's a good idea. So That's it's a good idea. thing to do yeah. that. Um, also, I usually bring five basic rods with me. Okay. Uh, I think it's important to limit your selection uh, as to not have too many rods in the boat at a time. Um, always take a good cranking rod, about a seven foot, you know, uh, medium action. You can throw uh, deep crankbaits, shallow crankbaits, square bills, everything on your uh, on your cranking rod. Okay. Uh, next is usually a, a heavy action rod with some length to it and heavy line. Uh, you can throw uh, your favorite jigs, uh, you can pitch and flip, you could uh, throw Carolina rigs on this rod, it's a very versatile rod. Something long uh, with a good stiff action. Okay. Uh, next is probably my favorite is a finesse action rod. Uh, this rod you can do everything with. It's a seven foot uh, medium with a moderate tip. I've got a 12 pound line on it, I can drop shot with this rod, I can shake your head with this rod, I can throw small, very, very small crankbaits with this rod. It's a, it's a great action to okay. have with you. Alrighty. Uh, next and always uh, important is a good topwater rod um, with uh, monofilament on it. I usually throw about 15 pound mono on my topwaters. Uh, and you can also use this rod for cranking as well if okay. you get in the pinch. All right. Um, and uh, also, last but not least, is a, a reaction rod spinner baits, uh, uh, buzz baits. You can throw uh, lots of things on this type of a spinner bait rod. Okay. All right. So, uh, in general, uh, basically, I just like to be as organized as possible, even though it gets chaotic. Uh, you want to do the best that you can to maintain your organization, uh, and you want to limit the amount of rods you bring in the boat, and you want to be prepared for safety, and you want to be prepared with everything you might need. Okay. Um, just uh, what, what, do you give your boater money? Or how, oh, how, absolutely. How does that work? Yeah, that's, you buy, that's one of the most critical gas? things I, mean, I didn't talk kind of about. Things, yeah. I think uh, when you show up for a, a bigger tournament as a co-angler, you, you need to make sure that you offer to bring anything that you can bring the boater. Uh, ice, uh, extra bottle of water, uh, things that you can do uh, to kind of pitch into the effort. And also, each and every time, whether you're fishing with a buddy or you're fishing in a tournament, you need to offer gas money. And uh, these days, you know, $20, $25, $30 is really not good enough anymore. Right, right. It should be more like $40, $50, $60, depending on the range that you run. You're fishing a river system and you're running 45, 50 miles one way and back, that's more like $60, $75 okay. just for your piece of the gas money. Okay. These guys are paying for boats, they're paying for insurance, they're dragging it across the country. So you need to do whatever you can to help out. Okay, so you think you know helping them out and, and being organized makes it a lot less stressful Absolutely. on them, makes Absolutely. a funner day for you. And you want to uh, never be in the way, always offer to help, uh, be as helpful as possible, and that way uh, when you see that person the next time, they'd be happy to have you back in their boat. Okay, all right, well, we appreciate it. Thanks, Travis. Thank you, Chris. And uh, that's it for Get Lemon Outdoors. We'll see you next time, folks.